Hi! In this video, we're going to talk about algorithms in Carol. Now, what are algorithms? Introducing algorithms. An algorithm is a self-contained, step-by-step set of instructions to solve a problem. And algorithms are a very important part of computer science and a very commonly used idea in programming. So, an algorithm is just a self-contained, step-by-step set of instructions that solve a problem. And there's a lot of examples of algorithms in the real world. Recipes to prepare a dish, that's an algorithm. Directions to get somewhere, that's an algorithm. And programs. All programs are examples of algorithms. So, let's look at an example of an algorithm. This is the Hokey Pokey algorithm. So it is a step-by-step -step set of instructions that shows you how to do the Hokey Pokey dance. You put your left hand in, you take your left hand out, you put your left hand in, you shake it all about, and so on. That is an algorithm. It's a step-by-step -step set of instructions to do this dance. We can also have an algorithm to make a peanut butter and jelly sandwich. So to make a PB&J sandwich, repeat the following twice, put one slice of bread on the table, then open up the peanut butter jar, then open up the jelly jar, grab a knife, and so on. And we can make a full peanut butter and jelly algorithm. What about in Carol? What's a good example of a Carol algorithm? Well, the one we've been writing a lot is getting Carol to move to a wall. So to move to a wall, all we need to do is, while the front is clear, move. This is a self-contained, step-by-step set of instructions to get Carol to move all the way to a wall. And it's not written in code, it's just normal English, but this is an algorithm. So algorithms turn into programs. Programs are implementations of algorithms. Algorithms are kind of like the idea. They are the concept that gets the problem solved, and programs are the physical implementation of that algorithm. So algorithms are simply step-by-step -step set of instructions, and programs put those instructions, they put these algorithms into a computer executable form. So even though we could give these instructions to a friend and they could figure out how to move to a wall, we can't give these instructions to a computer. We have to convert that into code, we convert that into a program, and then the computer is able to run it. So programs put algorithms into computer executable form. So how do we build algorithms? Well, all algorithms are made up of three building blocks, sequencing, iteration, and selection. And we'll go into each of these. But all algorithms can be made using only these three techniques. So first off, sequencing. What is sequencing? Well, sequencing is step-by-step -step execution of instructions in the order that they are given. So for example, if I said move, turn left, then move, this is sequencing. You're just doing them in order as they come, in the order that they're given. And if we convert this into code, it would just be the natural flow of a program, doing line by line, move, turn left, move. So programs naturally sequence. They are naturally executing using sequencing. And then we have iteration. So iteration is repetition of instructions for either a specified number of times or until a certain condition is met. So in English, I could say, repeat the following five times, move. And in code, we have a control structure for this. We can use a for loop to repeat five times. So this is the code implementation of iteration. That's a specified number of times. What about until a condition is met? I could say, while there are balls, take one ball. In code, this would look like this. We use a while loop. While balls present, take a ball. Take ball. So that's iteration. And this is a little bit different than sequencing because rather than doing instructions in the order they're given, we are repeating an instruction over and over again. Then there's selection. So selection is using a condition to determine which part of the algorithm gets executed, to determine which instructions end up getting executed. And so in English, selection might look like this. If there is a ball, take one ball. Otherwise, move. And this translates directly into code with if-else statements. If Ball's present, take a ball, else, move. So if else statements let us use selection in algorithms. One part of the algorithm, the take ball part, is executed if balls are present, and a separate part, a completely separate part of the algorithm, separate instructions are executed if there are no balls present. So that's selection. So all algorithms are made with sequencing, iteration, and selection. Sequencing is the step-by-step -step execution in the order given, and this is just the natural program flow. Programs just go line by line. Then there's iteration, and this is repeating instructions. And to do iteration in a program, you use a control structure like a for loop or a while loop. And then there's selection. Selection is choosing which instructions to execute. And again, we use a different control structure, either if statements or if else statements, to put selection into our algorithms. Now, it's important to be able to compare two algorithms against each other. There are many different ways to solve 
the same problem. So if two algorithms both solve the same problem, there are certain things we can look at to say which algorithm is better. One is efficiency. Efficiency is how fast the algorithm is. The other is clarity, how clear and readable the algorithm is. So let's take a look at these two algorithms. They both achieve the task of turning right. The left one says, to turn right, you repeat the following three times, turn left. The right one says, to turn right, you repeat the following seven times, turn left. So on the right, you'll do a full 360, you'll do a full spin, and then you'll do three more turns to end up turning left. So which one is better, do you think? Well, in this case, the one on the left is better because this one is more efficient. It repeats only three times instead of seven. All we're trying to do is turn right. We don't want to do all these extra spins. So the one on the left is more efficient. It's faster. What about this one? To pick up 20 balls, take one ball, take one ball, take one ball, take one ball, repeat that, just type that out 20 times. And this one, to pick up 20 balls, repeat the following 20 times, take a single ball. Which one's better here? Well, in this case, the algorithm on the right is better because this is clearer and much easier to read. If you looked at the one on the left, it would take a while to count all those statements and figure out that you're actually doing 20. This one is much more concise, it's clear, and it uses the control structure to repeat 20 times. Now, writing algorithms is very important. As our programs get more and more complicated, it's important to develop the proper algorithm before diving into the actual code. It's much harder to get the program correct if we just start diving in and typing out code. Creating the proper algorithm beforehand makes the programming part way easier. So the problem solving process should really look a little like this. We should develop our algorithm in natural language, just English or Spanish or just any natural language, then develop the algorithm in pseudocode, which is not really code, it's kind of in between natural language and code. And then once we have it in pseudocode, it's very easy to go from that to a program. Now, what is pseudocode? This is this, this new word, what is pseudocode? So introducing pseudocode. Pseudocode is writing out our algorithm in English-like code to help us figure out how to write the program. So it's in between English and actual code. Let's look at an example of this. So the problem solving process should really like look like this. You get the problem, you think about it and understand it, make sure you understand the problem, then develop the algorithm that solves the problem in natural language, just English or Spanish or whatever, whatever natural language is for you. Then write pseudocode that isn't really code, but it's, it's, it's getting there. It's starting to put it into coding ideas. And then once you have that, it's easy to translate into actual code. So let's look at an example of this. Our problem is we want to write a program that has Carol run a race. Carol should run around the edge of the grid eight times. That is our problem. So how can we make an algorithm that has Carol run around the edge of the grid eight times? Well, first let's write it out in English. To run the race, we want to repeat the following eight times. Run a lap. Boom. Done. But run lap isn't defined, so we actually have to go in and define that, top-down design. So to run one lap, repeat the following four times. Run a single side, and then turn left. So that will have you run a side, then turn left, then run a side, then turn left, then run a side, then turn left, then run a side, and end back where you started. You ran one complete lap. But run one side is not defined, so we actually have to define that too. So to run one side, while the front is clear, go ahead and move. And notice this is the same as our move to wall algorithm from earlier. So this is something we see a lot, is algorithms will use other algorithms as part of themselves. So the move to wall algorithm is part of this larger run race algorithm. So boom, we're done. We have our algorithm written out in a natural language. Now let's convert this into pseudocode. So we don't want to worry exactly about the syntax. We just want to start putting our ideas out there in terms of which control structure we're using and which functions we're using. So here, to run a race. Well, that's really saying a function. We want to write a function called run race. And what do we do inside of this function? Well, we repeat the following eight times, run a lap. Well, we're repeating a fixed number of times. So that's going to be a for loop. And it's going to go from zero to eight. So for i going from zero to eight, run a single lap. OK, but now we have to define run lap. So to run one lap. That's going to be function run lap. Repeat the following four times. Well, that's going to be a for loop that goes from zero to four. And inside this for loop, we want to run a single side and then turn left. OK, but now we have to define one run one side. So function run one side. So our natural language algorithm says, while the front is clear, move. So in pseudocode, we're going to use a while loop. While the condition front is clear, go ahead and move. And now that we have this pseudocode, we have a pretty good idea of how we're actually going to implement this in real code. 
So going from this to the actual program is very easy. It's just adding the proper syntax. Notice the pseudocode is not language dependent. It's not necessarily Carol or JavaScript or anything. It's, it's, it's more of an idea. And the natural language is really amorphous. It's, it's definitely not tied to any particular programming language. But we go from this natural language to pseudocode all the way to an actual programming language that can run on a computer. So that is the problem solving process with algorithms. And algorithms are going to be a very important part of developing any program.